Angry Joe here, and I'm with Bob, lead designer on Shadow of Mordor. Did I say that right? That's right. I, I've been getting that wrong, so my fans are like, it's Mordor, George. More <laughs> door. <laughs> All right, so I, I just got a hands-on with it. Um, I gotta say, it surprised me. This is a title that seemed to come out of nowhere, at least for me, and um, it's it's what I played was impressive uh, and very unique. They had this system. Well, I'll let you explain the system, where um, you have like a hierarchy of different orcs and their command. And in Act Two, what you're really trying to do is uh, is uh, attack. Go, yeah, go yeah, ahead. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about this unique arc tribal system. Yeah, the, it, we call it the Nemesis system. Nemesis. And uh, and what it what it means is basically every enemy in the world to start with. You know, every guy you'd think of as like a generic grunt. Uh, you know, cannon fodder type enemies, they all have this potential to actually kind of grow and get more powerful and become sub-bosses and bosses in the game. And they remember you, they build a history and relationship with you, and we've got just mountains of, of content and dialogue to remember all the possible interactions you could have had and have them speak to it the next time you meet them. Which means Yeah, that I remember one time I got into a fight with one of them, right, and then uh, I lost. Because what was the guy's name? Irk the Killer? It was Irk like the Unkillable, man. He truly was the Unkillable. He whooped my ass. And then, so I, I died and I went back to fight him again. And he said something that I think was from a previous fight that yeah, we he had. Yeah, probably it called was, you out on, I mean, it's probably pretty surprising when you think you killed somebody and they yeah. show back up to, exactly. to take you out again. <laughs> Is this some kind of joke? I killed you already! So yeah, th so these guys will remember you and... and to, to do that, we also have to do something a little different where time moves forward. You know, you don't die, reload a checkpoint, replay the last minute of the game, right? It's always moving forward. So these guys are they're getting renowned. They're getting recognition for having killed this crazy, uh, you know, hero that's been kind of terrorizing them, right? So they'll get promoted. They'll become a captain. You can hunt them back down and get revenge or... Uh, you know, the other big part of the Nemesis system is learning their strengths and weaknesses. So mm. these guys are all procedurally generated. So no two playthroughs, you know, between you and your friends or the second time you play are ever going to be alike because these guys are built out of a lot of different dynamic parts and personalities. And so the, the strengths and weaknesses make a big difference too that, you know, if you're going after the unkillable, uh, there's probably some vulnerability he's got that if you're careful and you yes. plan and strategize, he you does not like to be burned. There you, you know, go. So trying to try to burn him, or he's weak to arrows, and you try to hit him with your arrows. Yeah, it's a unique system. Um, like I lost to him twice, and he kept moving up uh, on the hierarchy. But my goal was to like uh, brand him and uh -huh. actually bring him under my control. How does that factor That's into right. the story? These guys are are going up the hierarchy, but they're my agents within like how does that work so at the beginning of the game you're you're killing them you know you're, yeah. you're just kind of slaughtering and getting vengeance and you know trying to weaken sauron's army but as you discover kind of more of the powers you know you're possessed by this wraith this kind of ancient spirit of vengeance and you're you're discovering the mystery of him throughout the game but you're also growing his power and power and tolkien and has elf a, lord correct well we, we haven't said anything more than that he's a wraith Oh, but okay. it's fun to watch the internet speculate about who it might be. Okay. Well, it, I played it and it looked like an elf to That's me. That's a fair observation. <laughs> <All> right. <laughs> so, so as you get deeper into the game, the demo we're showing at E3 here that you got to play is, you know, two-thirds of the way through the game. So at that point, you've developed more of these powers. And one of the, the critical things is in Tolkien, like the nature of power is to bend your enemies to your will. Mm -hmm. And so at, at this point, you're not just killing them. You can, yeah, you can brand them and make them yours and they'll fight for you. Mm -hmm. And so... If you get really tricky about it, you can set up some crazy situations. Oh yeah, no, because not only can you... I, I was branding like normal little infantry guys, and you can brand like... Uh, is there a limit on branding? Because at some point I had like uh, five or six uh, shooting arrows. Yeah. It was like I had my own little army there That's of awesome. orcs. It was pretty cool. Yeah, you can brand as much as you want. That's cool. Now, I, I noticed that I was... Um, I was playing through and I was like, I, you know, obviously I've never heard of this guy before, Talion, right? right? And uh, I've not heard of him in, in the lore of Tolkien, right. he's a completely new right. character to the universe. Right. I was like, there's a lot here, this could have been a new IP, it kind of seems like it would have been fine to make it a new IP. Why, why is it in the Lord of the Rings? It seems kind of forced into Lord of the Rings lore, don't you think? I, I don't think so. I, we're huge This guy's fans. way more powerful than Legolas and stuff. Like, where was he during the war? Where does this take place <laughs> so, in, the, in the timeline? Yeah, so his, in the history here, this is between, this whole story is happening between the events of The Hobbit and The Lord of the Rings. Okay. So there's decades and decades there uh, where Sauron returned to Mordor. He, you know, he'd been defeated thousands of years mm -hmm. prior. And he'd been gone for a long time and he returns at the beginning of the game and kills you. Mm -hmm. uh, so you start the game, 
as a as a dead guy, mm-hmm. and you're resurrected by this wraith, this spirit of vengeance, you know, and he he gives you that power. So it's the mystery of figuring out who he is, but also you're a you're a human. I mean, in Tolkien lore, mm-hmm. I mean, Tolkien is we're trying to be very true not only to the canon details but to the just authentic to the themes. You know, mm-hmm. it's about death and immortality and and. This guy, you know, the gift of Eru is like, men are the species that it's allowed to die. Elves mm-hmm. live forever. Men get to die, but Talion's not allowed to. Like, he doesn't get the piece of death, right? right. And so you're trying to kind of deal with that as well. So th- it, it, thematically, it's very authentic. Yeah. And we're really, like, pushing on the story missions that you'll play and all the exploration and collectible, all the all like the different it. elements of the game. We are really careful to make sure they're authentic, both to the specific details of the canon mm-hmm. and to, the, like I said, the themes of Tolkien, you know? Yeah. So do you do any character customization within the world? Like, are you finding new pieces of armor, new pieces of clothing for the main character? Uh, the, there's a lot of progression and upgrades and stuff for the character. Uh, not does so he much... always look the same in his particular outfit? Yeah, so you, yeah, there's no uh, clothing customization or, or that kind of thing. But it's character customization, so you can talk about a little bit about the skills that yeah. he has that you can upgrade. Exactly. So the progression is, uh, you know, you got your ranger skills that are kind of more the physical world-based stuff, mm-hmm. and you got all your wraith skills that are kind of building the wraith world powers and all that. And then uh, those are kind of all the big meaty ones that give you like a new tool in the in the arsenal, right? Mm-hmm. And then there's the weapons, which is a pretty deep system too. Where again, in Tolkien, weapons are are real characters, like they're characters in their own right. You got Glamdring, the sword Gandalf uses. And, Sting, Frodo, and Bilbo's sword. Mm-hmm. These guys, they're weapons that have names and they have stories that are written on the blades. And so throughout the game, you're kind of also building the legend of your weapons and getting getting uh, their names and their stories written on the blades. And the nemesis system there, again, like feeds in where you, you build a personal kind of history with these guys. And then when you take them down, they're going to drop uh, runes that you kind of etch onto your blade. You're kind of carving the fate of your enemy onto your blade. And mm-hmm. that gives it kind of new powers and new upgrades. And so that's the other big kind of upgrade. So this is Sauron's army that you're fighting? That's right. Do we eventually get to Sauron himself? I mean, that seems like that's not what happened in, in the books. Well, uh, this is a whole new story right. in, in there, so we don't know what happened in this in, in this period of history, right? So I'm not going to say anything more we'll about have to find no, out. No spoilers. No okay. Spoilers. So about how long is this RPG uh, adventure, this open world game, would you say? Well, so it's a, it's a big game, yeah. and there's a lot of optional stuff to do, uh-huh. and the Nemesis system's kind of constantly generating new dynamic missions and stuff, so... So no two playthroughs are going to have the same exactly. orcs? They'll all have exactly. different names? Everybody will be completely different, different personalities, uh-huh. different strengths and weaknesses, so... Do you take do you take uh, branching paths in the storyline, anything yeah, like that? It's got a... Yeah, so even the main story missions are... There's side missions and exploration collectibles, all that stuff, but the main story missions are also non-linear. Oh, um, wow. It's actually structured very similar to Red Dead Redemption which oh uh, my Christian, god I love that game so this yeah, is good, all good news so Christian Canavesa the yeah. lead designer and writer on Red Dead actually wrote our story and worked with us on that so very cool yeah yeah and so what we've seen in playtest when people come in just start at the beginning and play it's at least 20 hours to mm-hmm. kind of typical playthrough go through not doing all the side all the extra stuff yeah that's good, and then you can replay it. Are there different endings, alternate endings, or does it is it one full complete story, you know, beginning, middle, end? Also, the that's that's kind of the beauty of the Nemesis system is like you're constantly these guys get factored in, and they're all kind of developing different relationships and writing their own different stories with you as you play. So mm-hmm. it always comes out a little different because of that. Okay, well, it's what from what I played, super impressive. Came out of nowhere. I actually really like the way he moves in the world. That was really smooth. Like if you you hold down X and you know he traverses pretty much anything, jumps off pretty much anything. Doesn't take fall damage because the dude doesn't really die. You know, doesn't get hurt, so he could pretty much go anywhere, do anything kind yeah. of thing, which I thought was pretty cool. Well. Thank you so much for taking the time to speak with us. Yeah, thank you. And uh, you guys check out the game, uh, Shadows of Mordor, and we'll see y'all on the next Angry Joe Show. Where am I to lead this army of mine? I will show you.